Okay, so linear, what's linear? Linear means it's a first degree, see x to the first, and uh, repeated means that it's to a higher power than one, like squared, cubed, to the fourth power. It means you have this factor repeated, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the decomposition. The first thing you wanna look for though is to see if it's a, an improper fraction. You can see this is x squared. If we were to FOIL this out, this would be x cubed. The degree in the numerator is lower than the degree in the denominator, so we don't have to do long division and convert it. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to uh, see how we're gonna break this down. So what we're gonna do is we already have the denominator factored, so it's gonna be x. This is gonna be x plus one. And then we wanna do x plus one squared. Okay, if we just had you know, x plus one squared and not x plus one, or x plus one and not x plus one squared, we wouldn't be taking into account you know, all the possible uh, fractions originally before we combine them into one fraction to get the fraction that we have here. So you could have this denominator and this denominator. When you combine them together, the common denominator is still gonna be x plus one squared. So you have to consider the fact that there may be a fraction with just x plus one to the first power. Okay, so you wanna take those into account. Now if this was x plus one cubed, we would have x plus one, x plus one squared, and then x plus one cubed. <clears throat> but you can hear, see here it's just to the second power. Now the next thing is the numerator. Well, we know this is to, to the first degree, it's linear. This has to be lower by one degree. That's gonna be a constant. We're gonna call that A. This is also linear. We want this to be one low, degree lower, so we're gonna call that B. Now here's where students sometimes make a mistake. They see that this is x squared, and they think this will be like Cx plus D okay, because they want it to be one degree lower than the, what they think is the x squared. But because this is a linear factor, it's just x to the first, we're just gonna make this a constant c. Okay, so just make note of that when you're doing these problems. It's not a quadratic factor, this is a linear factor, so this is just gonna be one degree lower. Okay, so now all we have to do is we just have to clear the denominators and solve this equation. So we're gonna multiply the left and the right sides, the entire equation, by the common denominator. This is the common denominator here, x times x plus one squared. So when we multiply each of these fractions by that quantity, we clear the denominators, and we're left with 5x squared plus 11x plus two. Here the x's are gonna cancel out. We're gonna have a times x plus one squared, plus here we're gonna have b times x times another x plus one, because one of the x plus ones is gonna cancel. And then the third one, when we multiply, we're gonna be left with c times x. So we've cleared the denominators by multiplying through by this common denominator. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Well, we're gonna be strategic, and we're gonna say, let's let x equal zero, because if we do that, zero times anything is zero. That's gonna cancel out these two groups and we can solve for a. So let's let x equals zero, x equals zero. So that's gonna make this zero plus zero plus two equals zero plus one is one, one squared is one, that's gonna be a. Okay, so we solve for a. Let's be strategic again. Let's set x equal to negative one. That'll cancel out this term and this term. We'll be able to solve for c. Okay, so let's do that. So if we put uh, x equals negative one, we get negative one squared is one, times five is five, Okay, plus negative 11 is negative six, plus two is negative four. Okay, negative one plus one, that's gonna make this zero, that's gonna make this zero, that's gonna make this negative c, so you can see that c equals positive four. Now all we're left to solve for is b. Well, there's, we can't cancel anything out by being strategic by setting x to a certain value to cancel out some of the other terms. So why don't we just let x equal positive one? Okay, so we're gonna say x equals one. We put in one here, we get 11, plus five is 16, plus two is 18. A we already know is two, and we're putting one in for x, so that's one plus one, it's two, two squared is four. Okay, B we don't know, times one, times one plus one is two, so that's gonna be B times two, plus C we know is four, so that's four times one, which is four. Now we can solve the equation for B. So what do we have here? We've got eight plus four is 12. Subtract the 12, that's gonna give you six equals two B. So by dividing, we get B equals three. Now we know A, B, and C. And if we go ahead and put these back in, 
you can see that these would be your original fractions before you combine them together to get this fraction here. So we decompose it, we broke it down into the original fractions prior to, to adding them together. So again, this is a good technique, you know, by picking certain values for x to cancel out some of the terms, but sometimes you'll get to the point where, you know, you'll have to just pick a, a value like we did here at the end, we substituted x equals 1 in and we use the, the other values that we solve for already. Now if we had a couple other variables left over, we'd have to solve a system and I can show you how that works in uh, some of the other videos. So I'll see you in the next video.